What's happening everyone? On today's video, I'm gonna be building a custom tabletop for a sit-stand desk that has an integrated monitor stand with storage below. I'll be building this project out of really simple materials, basically this plywood that I have here. Um, this is some fancy pre-finished stuff, but you could use any kind of cabinet grade plywood you might find at your local box store. Now I have my iPad here with a quick design sketch of what I'm intending to build. Um, I also have some information about the motorized base that I'll be using. So let's jump right in here and look at that. So the base I'll be using is the E4 base from FlexiSpot. It is available in both black and white. It has a weight capacity of over 200 pounds, offering a lot of value at its price point. FlexiSpot has a wide range of available options for sit-stand desks, including storage solutions and a wide range of varying weight capacities. Huge shout out to FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video and for providing me with this table base so I could make you guys this video. Now let's look at some design sketches. I'm thinking I want to go really basic with this one and use a simple rectangular tabletop. Then on top, I want to add an elevated monitor riser that will be attached to the base. Below the monitor stand, I'd like to put a drawer on one side and some little shelves to hold papers on the other. So I think this is about all I need to get started. It's a really basic design. I think it's going to achieve exactly what I need it to. I also laid out some quick dimensions for myself to act as a guide during construction, but of course these are subject to change. I started off by cutting my tabletop to size in my table saw. I'm using one inch thick apple ply for this, but three quarter inch plywood would also be adequate. Then out of three quarter inch plywood, I ripped an 11 inch wide piece, which will be the monitor stand. Finally, I cut some strips at three and three quarters of an inch wide, which will be the risers for the monitor stand. Next, I come over to my miter saw and I set a stop lock to match the width of my monitor stand. Then I cut four pieces at exactly the same length. Now what I'm doing here is a layout check and comparing it to the concept sketch I did earlier. I'm looking to see if there's any adjustments I should make in the size and positioning of all the pieces to make it look and function better. I decided to go with the overhang look and insetting the monitor riser from the edge of the table about two inches. Now I can cut to length my monitor riser. Next, I mark the layout of the risers on the bottom of the monitor stand. I grab my trim router with a three quarter inch straight bit in it that matches the width of the plywood. I cut a groove in a test piece to check the fit. Since the fit is perfect, we come over and route four grooves in the bottom of the monitor stand using a straight edge as a guide. After I checked the fit of the risers in the top, I left the shop for a few minutes to get some food. When I returned, something really, really scary had happened that was a big eye opener for me. Oh no, why, why is there smoke in here? Routers can sometimes cause enough friction for a little ember to start. I've seen this happen a few times before, but I've never had it go unnoticed. While I was gone for 15 minutes, a little ember started smoldering in a pile of sawdust here and kicked a lot of smoke in the air in the shop. This was really eye opening to me. If an ember had fallen in a different place or left to burn for longer, this could have led to tragedy. Okay, enough drama, back to the build. Now that I have the risers fit, I can mark the length of the piece for the back. I also cut the two middle risers down in length, so the back piece will be concealed around the sides and top of the riser. Now I will measure and locate where I want to put the shelves for the paper organizer. In my sketch, I was envisioning having three openings, but in looking at the material I have available, I'm only going to put two. So one shelf down the middle. Now I proceed to clamp my part down to the bench with what I thought was enough clamping force to hold it down. This turned out to be a mistake. You'll see what I'm about to do right here. Yeah, that's not gonna work out. Let's cut another one of these and move over to our router table. Yeah, I should have just done this the first time. This worked beautifully. Now I will dry fit these two risers and take a final measurement for the width of the shelf. Then I cut the shelf to size out of half inch plywood and check it for a good fit. I'm 
I'm so close to assembling this now. All I have to do is drill a hole in the back faceplate, which will act as a wire chase. And now I can finally glue everything together. I applied a minimal amount of glue on the bottom of each groove to try to minimize squeeze out on this one. Since these joints also fit very tightly, I didn't use a lot of clamps for this. Instead, over the course of 15 minutes as the glue was setting up, I kept applying pressure on all of the joints, ensuring that everything was snugly together. Then with glue and 18 gauge brad nails, I attached the back plate to the riser assembly. Now for my personal favorite part of every project, routing the edge profile in the tabletop. I wasn't sure if I should just bevel the front edge or if I should route the return edges as well. I decided to route three of the sides, so the left, right, and front edges. Let me know down in the comments if you think this was the right decision. Then I took an even larger chamfer bit in my big router and I cut about a 5 8 inch chamfer on the front edge only of the tabletop. Personally, I think this is a really nice detail. It helps soften the edge of the table on the wrist. Again, let me know what you think down in the comments. Unfortunately for me, when I routed this chamfer in there, I exposed a void that was in the core of the plywood. And of course it has to be on the front edge of the desk. I was left with the option of filling the hole or cutting the table smaller and rerouting the profile in it. I decided that filling the hole with CA glue was the best option. I'm sure if you're on YouTube watching woodworking, you're hearing everyone rave about this stuff. CA glue is really handy to have around the wood shop. It's basically like super glue that dries super clear instead of milky white, and it has an activator spray that cures it up in under five minutes, it's ready to sand. So I sand flat the front face only to give myself a flat reference of the bearing on my router bit, and I come through and clean up any excess glue with my router. Next, all I gotta do is build the drawer box, and we're almost ready to assemble the motorized base. Knowing that there's like a thousand different ways to construct a box, as a woodworker, it can often be tough to make a choice on how to join all the corners together. I decided to go with this lap joint method, where I lap the sides into the bottom panel and the sides into each other. I think this decision for most woodworkers is often a very personal one. We're usually trying to strike a balance of what our abilities are, what our tools are capable of, the strength we're trying to achieve out of the joint, and the final aesthetic. Let me know what you think of the method I chose for this one. Now I'll sand all the cut edges up to 220 grit and soften all the corners with my orbital sander. You might be wondering why the edge of this plywood is painted black. It's probably a good time to mention that I got this apple ply from a garage sale for free. Yes, I got all this plywood for free. I went there to pick up a tool and ended up leaving with a truckload of free wood. I'm not hugely fond of the red, but the finish is really nice. I think it did come from the factory. I'm not sure someone could achieve this kind of finish in their garage. Whoever had this wood last painted the edges black. It's not really my thing. I did really like the price though, so we make use of what we have. Since it took me 15 minutes to sand the paint off with my orbital sander, I decided I could sacrifice shaving off a 16th of an inch on both sides with my router. There's always more than one way to do it. After I was done sanding, I applied three coats of a water-based polyurethane finish to all of the exposed edges. I applied it with a foam brush and came back with a dry rag to wipe off any excess. Fortunately for me, any spots that I missed with the rag were easily able to be peeled off, and the same went for any glue. This pre-finished surface is pretty glossy and nothing really sticks to it. Now we are finally at the last step in the assembly for the tabletop. I'm going to attach the monitor riser to the tabletop using wood screws. So I locate all four of the risers on the back of the tabletop and transfer those marks to the bottom of the table. Then I clamp the riser in place so it doesn't move and I drive two screws into each riser, drilling a pilot hole first to prevent any cracking. Now for the fun part. We have to turn this embarrassment of a folding table office desk from this into... But before we get there, we have to assemble the motorized base. I thought the instructions were very clear and all the parts were either labeled or they were easily identified. It only requires two tools to assemble this and I did it in about 15 minutes. You'll only need an Allen wrench, which comes with it, and a screwdriver or a drill. There's really not that many parts on this base. It was very simple and easy to put together. 
right, so I'm super excited here, about to mount the top to the base. But before I do that, I wanna just point out a couple of features that I noticed here as I'm assembling this base. So the first one here are these little rubber grommets or little feet that actually point upward. Um, these are to protect the base from your tabletop, keep things from sliding around, even though I, it will be fastened to the base with screws. Um, these will also act as some sound absorption, so keep the top feeling nice and sturdy, less tinny sounding. The main feature that I think is super important if you were thinking about building a custom top for a sit-stand desk is that this base is actually telescoping. Um, it can expand in its width to accommodate a number of different tabletop sizes, and I think that's pretty cool. I'm going to be using it on its smallest setting today, but you know, if you had a much wider table base, this could accommodate a wide variety of table widths. So the manual says that it can accommodate up to 66.9 inches, so that's about 5 foot 6 inches in width. Um, I'm sure you could fit a slightly wider top on here as long as it didn't exceed the weight capacity of 220 pounds. Yeah, super cool that this is telescoping. If I ever decided to build another top for this, this base should still work for it. So let's finish assembling this and I'll show you how it works. Alright, so this project in total took me about 10 to 12 hours to design, fabricate, and assemble uh, both the tabletop and the bases. Overall, I'm really, really pleased with the end result here. Um, the sturdiness of the table is amazing. The base is very, very stiff. The one flaw I think I would change if I was to do this again is I would not put the drawer on the right side. It interferes with my mouse pad. I'm a little embarrassed because I actually sketched it in the sketch I showed in the beginning of the video on the left side and I made a decision in the middle of the build to put on the right. I don't know why, but I did. Lesson learned for next time. So if you decide to build one, put your drawer on the left side or the opposite side of whichever hand you use your mouse with. So if you're someone who works from home, either some or all of the time, or maybe you're a gamer or anyone else who uses a computer for extended periods of time, having a sit stand desk is amazing. They're really awesome for comfort for working from home or just spending a long time behind the computer screen. If you're interested to use the same motorized table base that I used in this build, I'll put a link to the E4 FlexiSpot table base down in the description. FlexiSpot makes other table bases that can handle more weight than this one. The E4 base is about middle of its class in terms of weight capacity. Consider how much weight your tabletop and all the components you're gonna put on top of it will be before you make your purchase. Some other cool build videos popping up on your screen here, so check those out. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.